back, everyone, to another edition, another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I have a rant that I held off on last night because, honestly, I was just not in a good space. Not in a good space. Yeah, and, it, you know, it, it's one thing to be pissed off about something. It's another thing to be just completely utterly dejected about it and that's where i am with the yankees after they dropped game three at home to the dodgers four to two and now the new york yankees are one game away from being swept <clears throat> never in my wildest nightmares did i think the yankees would or could be swept in this series it, it never, not a second. And unlike in the Cleveland in Guardians game three, where the Yankees came back the next day to win, the Yankees have not recovered from game one's debacle. They have not recovered. <clears throat> um, but before we jump in, thank you for our con- to, to our subscribers for continued support. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Also, jump on over to Rudy's Rant on YouTube and subscribe over there. If you haven't done so, become a member of our Come On Now, the podcast family, as we'll be dropping live content and membership content only. So jump on board. Uh, We talk facts over feelings here, and anyone who knows me has known that I don't like Aaron Aaron Boone. I, I don't like him. I think he's an atrocious manager. And again and again and again, he continues to show me why I don't like him. I don't manage a game. By the way, I just woke up, so I'm just clearing my head. I don't manage a game based on a book. Managing a game is based on feel. Managers, Managers in baseball don't create wins, but they sure as shit create losses. They find what a manager doesn't typically create a whole lot of wins, but they can sure as hell create a whole lot of losses with the decisions that they make. And I know some people will say, you know, it's the pitcher's fault or it's the hitter's fault or it's the player's fault or it's whoever's fault. <clears throat> They're the ones that are on the field. But that's just not. It's 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 like it's like saying your defense in football got beat, but you 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 blitzed. No one got to the quarterback, and you left your cornerbacks on an island, and they got beat deep. They're gonna get beat deep if you put them in the in that position over and over and over and over and over again. That's why teams don't blitz every down in football. In baseball. When you keep yanking pitchers out after a certain amount of pitches, or <clears throat> you don't use the 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 long the starters who you put in the bullpen <clears throat> as um <clears throat> who you put in the bullpen as your stretch reliever in the event that your starter doesn't do well. I, I, what's the point? It, it, Clark Schmidt pitches yesterday. You got Shohei Otani who decides he's going to play. If you think Shohei Otani was not in complete and utter agony on every swing he took, you're crazy. You're absolutely crazy. If you watched that game last night, Shohei Otani could barely make contact without pain. If you made him reach for a ball, you could see it. He was <clears throat> he was holding his arm his left arm to his chest. He couldn't run because it requires doing this and he couldn't do it. And yet to open the game, Clark Schmidt throws a four pitch walk with not one pitch being anywhere near the strike zone. Not one pitch, high, outside, low, up and away, not one pitch. Shohei Otani did not have to swing the bat. He walks on four pitches. And then 
Mookie Betts is, gets, is, you know, flies out on a, on a sweeper pitch. And here comes Freddie Freeman. Here comes Freddie Freeman. By now, if you don't know where he likes the ball, you haven't been watching baseball. If you don't know that he's kind of on a heater right now, you don't know, you don't know baseball. You haven't been paying attention. He feels better. His foot feels better. And he's seeing the ball exceptionally well. And all you've done is give him batting practice pitches for him to continue to kick your ass. One, two count. Again, this is another example of bad managing, pitching, catching, all of it. All of it. On a one, two count, the first three pitches that Clark Schmidt throws down and away, up, up high middle, which was a ball, up high to the right, which was a strike. And then he throws him middle in. Fat cutter, cutter, which Freddie Freeman proceeds to deposit in the right field bleachers, and the Yankees are down 2 nothing. The worst possible start for the game happened because of basic, shitty baseball IQ. There's no other way to slice it. <clears throat> and then you get the Yankees come up. Gleyber Torres walks. Mon Soto hit a screamer to left that was caught, was a good play by uh, Teoscar Hernandez. And uh, here comes Aaron Judge, man on base. Swings it a four-seam fastball right down the middle. Can't catch it. Then he takes two balls. <clears throat> then fouls one up a four-seam fastball that was actually higher than the other one. So the, the one that he swung at for a foul ball would have been called a ball probably. And he gets a ball three. It's three and two. And he gets a cutter off the plate and strikes out. I, I mean, are you surprised? Are you surprised? I'm not. <clears throat> And then Stanton grounds out, the inning's over. Schmidt gets through the next inning clean. Three up, three down. And then, of course, so does Walker Bueller. As Volpe strikes out, Rizzo strikes out after Chisholm fly ball to center. And this was the beginning of the end. The third inning, what does Clark Schmidt do again? He walks the leadoff hitter on four fucking pitches. I, 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 bro, what is the problem with throwing strikes? You have the nine hole hitter up and you're throwing low in, up high, outside, uh, way inside. And here comes Otani again. Otani hits a, a weak grounder to second. Or for, you know, second or whatever, whatever, first. It was a, a grounder, a ground out. After getting two balls again, again you threw him two balls to start the start the at bat. One is so the, they're both so far outside it makes no sense. Then he throws two strikes, two a strike looking, a strike swinging, and you could see on the strike swinging that Shohei Otani couldn't swing. I would be surprised if Shohei Otani plays tonight. You don't need him to. They don't need him to for what? You can see he's in pain. You, you can see he doesn't have it right now. I could be wrong. Tonight he might hit a homer. Who the hell knows? But you could see that he's not he wasn't you knew he wasn't right last night. He grounds out. Which gets Edmund to second. Mookie Betts then comes up. And this is just another example of the dog shit that the Yankees have been. Schmidt leads off this at bat with two more balls, then gets two strikes on a strike looking foul ball. And gets a couple of more foul, 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 ball three, foul. One of those foul balls was probably a foot away from Anthony Rizzo catching. So that at bat continues. And then he fights off a knuckle curve into right field. And Edmund is off on contact. He's off on contact. And Edmund scores. There you go. Another walk that comes to bite you in the ass. 
3-0. Yankees can't score runs right now. The last thing you can afford to be is down 3 nothing. Yankees have scored three runs once in the series. It was game one, three runs. The last two games, two and two. They've scored seven runs in three games. A team that averages five runs a game has scored seven runs in three games. <coughs> then Freddie Freeman walks. I'd walk him too. <laughs> Say Oscar Hernandez pops out. And then Max Muncy walks. And that's the end of Clark Schmidt's night. Two and two third. He walked four guys. And the Yankees are losing 3-0 or trailing 3-0 because of Clark Schmidt's inability, inability to throw strikes. Mark Leiter comes in. While the result is what you want, it's just not the right decision. It's not the right decision. Or if you want to use him, you use him for that one hitter, and then you move on. Mark Leiter throws 75 miles an hour. That crap can only last so long. There's a reason that Major League Baseball pitchers don't throw 75. Unless you're throwing knuckleballs the whole game. Unless you're throwing knuckleballs the whole game, there's a reason that guys that throw 75 to 85 don't last very long. And don't play in the major. Don't pitch any more than the majors very much. For more than an inning. More than a couple of batters. But he induces a weak grounder, and they get out of the inning. Here comes the Yankees' bottom third. More wonderful at-bats. Jose Trevino, who's replacing Austin Wells, because Austin Wells can't take the bat off his shoulder, strikes out on three pitches. Takes two. Right down the middle. And strikes out on a sweeper. Alex Verdugo comes up. Strikes out. By the way, the Yankees took 24. I saw a post. 24 forcing fastballs right down the middle for strikes last night. 24. This team is so off balance that it won't swing at fastballs that are right down the middle. And Walker Bueller does not throw a 99 mile an hour fastball. His fastball is 93, 94, 92, 95 max. And they took 24 fastballs right down the middle. Which is the second most in the majors this season of any team. And the most by the Yankees all season. If that doesn't tell you that this team is struggling to hit the ball, to see the ball, nothing else will. The the fact that you would have taken 24 fastballs Looking is crazy. Labor Torres walks. Labor Torres is getting on base. Like you can, the one thing you cannot say about Labor Torres is that man's gotten on base. He's gotten on base. He's been set in table, and guys have not pushed him in. Juan Soto then grounds out to end the inning. So it's now still 3 0. Then you have Mark Leiter comes back in. This is where you have two starting pitchers who are in the bullpen for the, for this exact situation. Long relief. Exact situation. Now, the Yankees were down 3-0. I wouldn't have pulled I, I wouldn't have pulled Clark Schmidt after the after Otani grounded out. So I'm not going to lay that on Aaron Boone. But what I am going to lay on Aaron Boone is his decisions, first of all, to not move Judge down in the lineup. Aaron Judge cannot hit third at this point. He has to move the fifth. I need John Carlos Stanton to get more at-bats. And I know it's not going to change tonight, and I know Aaron Judge will hit third again. But stubbornness is costly. Stubbornness and the unwillingness to adjust is costly. Aaron Judge can't hit right now. And if his name wasn't Aaron Judge, he'd be on the bench right now. But because he's Aaron Judge, you're not going to completely disrespect him and sit him on the bench in Game 4 of the World Series, but you're going to have to push him down the lineup. It 
doesn't make sense. So <clears throat> you start with Mark Leiter. He immediately walks Gavin Lux on five pitches. Kike Hernandez hits a single. Now Lux is at third. Tommy Edmund bunts. It was a safety squeeze where Lux was out at home. Don't know. He could have been safe. But it was called out at home. So the the, the replay wasn't enough to overturn it. Like you never saw Lux's hand actually touch home plate because <clears throat> Trevino blocked the plate when he came down. After he caught the ball and he came down, his, his shin guard completely blocked home plate. So you could never see Lux's hand actually touch home plate. You saw dirt, but you never saw his hand touch home plate. So it was a call that it had been, had he been called safe, it, you couldn't have overturned it either. You really couldn't have. You couldn't tell. So he's called out, and the Yankees escape. <clears throat> Cortez, Nestor Cortez comes in the game. See, Nestor Cortez, for whatever you want to say about him in game one, who when he shouldn't have been pitching in game one, which I, I don't blame him. I blame his manager. I blame Aaron Boone. A man doesn't pitch 37 in 37 days. You're throwing him into the highest leverage, highest of highest leverage situations. For all that, you might as well have started him that inning. Or no, in fact, what you should have done, which we all remember, is you should have left, you should have left Luke Weaver in the game, which ESPN Stephanie Mendoza said on first take, I think it was yesterday. And when I heard her say that, I was like, thank God someone else sees it the way I see it. Because I was I haven't heard one person say that Luke Weaver should have pitched a third inning. With the lead, Luke Weaver should be pitching. And he wasn't. <clears throat> I would have left him in the game. But Nestor Cortez now comes in. Shohei Otani, he strikes Shohei Otani out. Otani looked terrible in that, in that. And he looked terrible in the at bats. And he gets Mookie Best to fly out to left. Yankees come up again. Walker Bueller is is pitching still, and he, and Walker Bueller is mowing us mowing the Yankees down, mowing us down. Judge flies out to left. The first first pitch swing, knuckle curve. He just hits it off the end of that bat. If he had barreled it up, he hits it 400 feet. But because he hit it off the end of that bat, end of that bat, it was a fly ball to left, and it. It was probably the – but he's also continuing to uppercut the ball. You can see a swing. He's uppercutting, and that's going to cause you to strike out a whole lot. John Carlos Stanton doubles to left. The first hit the Yankees have the whole game. Jazz Chisholm hits a liner to right. And then Anthony Volpe singles to left. And the third base coach decides to send John Carlos Stanton – who runs slower hell than probably I do at this point. And I'm slow. And you could see it in every, like, talking Yanks, you, you, you have the live view in there. No! And I'm like, no! Because as soon as he hits third, Teoscar Hernandez has the ball. Teoscar Hernandez clearly doesn't have the greatest arm in left, but he, Stanton had just rounded third when he got the ball, and it took, it took a good throw for Te, a, a great, it took a great throw for Teoscar Hernandez, but <clears throat> on any average outfielder, Stanton would have been out by 10 feet. In this case, the ball bounced. He's sliding in. He slides right into the tag. Better off not have sliding. Better off, he's better off to have not have slid on the play. But he would have been out no matter what. Don't blame Stanton. I know how slow Stanton is. You have to hold him at third. You ran yourself out of a possible inning. And, I mean, there are people that are saying, 
Oh, you have to send him. You're down three nothing. No, you don't have to send him. You're down three nothing. That's exactly why you don't send him. I get it. The Yankees have not been hitting, but this is the one inning the Yankees had two hits and good contact in the two outs. And you have Anthony Rizzo on deck, who's actually hit the ball pretty decently in the in the playoffs. And you don't give him a chance to hit. He might be one of your more professional hitters because he's not sitting here trying to hit a homer. He chokes up so much on the bat. You see, he really is just trying to put the ball in play, which unfortunately most of our other guys are not doing. And the inning is over. <clears throat> the inning's over. Now Cortez runs through the next three guys. Freeman. Um Freeman was safe at first on an error by Jazz Chisholm. Uh, Oscar Hernandez flies to center, and Max Muncy runs into double play. The inning's over. Walker Buehler rolls run two, three. And then Aaron Boone decisions come to light again. And it may seem very, very insignificant to some people, but why the fuck is Jake Cousins being brought in to pitch? Nestor Cortez threw... Fifteen fucking pitches. Fifteen. He threw fifteen pitches. And you pull him. Why? Why, Aaron Moon? This is literally what his job is. Get us to the eighth inning, if possible. Maybe this, at least the seventh. No, you pull him to start the sixth. And what happens, folks? What do you think happens? What do you think fucking happens with Aaron Boone decisions? First guy is down on the liner. Gavin Lux is hit by a pitch. He steals second on Trevino, who can't throw. I'm sorry, yeah, Trevino, who can't throw. And Kike Hernandez immediately hits a single to center, and Gavin Lux scores. The game is now 4 nothing. The game is fucking over. Because we cannot hit. So you took out a guy who rolled through the five guys that he faced. Because, I mean, even Freeman, he got it. It was out on, he would have been out if they made a made a proper fielding play. He rolls through those five, only throws 15 pitches, clearly was pitching well, and you pull him for a guy who's been absolutely fucking bombed. And is one of the reasons we lost game one. Let's put Jake Cousins back out there. Let's use as many relievers as we possibly can. We want to throw everybody because that's what this man does. I mean, for Christ's sakes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fucking relievers. Seven. And you could have saved yourself four of them by letting Nestor Cortez pitch until the eighth inning if he was doing well. But instead, you pull him after one and two third. <clears throat> you don't even you don't even let him get through the sixth. At the very least, you let him get through the sixth. It, this, if you can see how this, I, this is just disgust. This is disgust. If the Yankees were gonna be, if Aaron Boone was gonna mismanage this team so damn poorly. You could have stayed. You could. You could have lost to Cleveland. Lost to Kansas City. Hell, don't make the playoffs. I, because now, the the the, the writing's on the wall. <clears throat> but the question is, will Hank Stein, will Hal or whatever, whichever Steinmer brother guy runs the team, will he do what he needs to do and fire Brian Cashman and fire Aaron Boone? Will he do that? Because Aaron Boone is an awful manager. Awful. I, I, I'm I pained watching him manage baseball games. Go get me a Joe Madden. Go get me a guy who doesn't manage off of an analytics playbook. Go bring back Buck Showalter. I, I mean, hell, bring Joe Torre out of, out of retirement. He's 90 now. I mean, I don't know how he's old. I, I just I can't.
I'm almost inviting of Joe Girardi back. That's how bad Aaron Boone is. And I couldn't stand Joe Girardi. I don't like managers who manage off analytics. I don't like it. I'll never like it. I don't I, I know it's a different age of baseball and and I have to accept it. No, I don't. I don't have to accept watching a thirty-six million dollar pitcher pulled after six because he gave up a base hit. Dominating the game, pitching a beautiful game, leading the game, and you pull him after six. I I I, I don't get I don't get behind that. It's the flipping World Series. You want to do that in game 42, hey, by all means, go ahead and do it, even though I don't agree with it there either. I don't agree with it there either. There's a reason the Yankees' bullpen every year gasses out by the end of June. And the Yankees go in a massive slump because their bullpen can't pitch anymore. There's no different here. So, the Yankees start off the sixth. Torres grounds out. Soto walks. Judge hits a weak grounder for a fielder's choice um, to the pitcher. Soto is out at second. Stanton singles. You have first and second now with two out, and Jazz Chisholm grounds into a fielder's choice. That ends the inning. Again, the Yankees are unable to get a key hit at all. That is the difference in this series. Beyond the Aaron Boone catastrophic managerial issues and the fact that Aaron Judge can't hit a ball, the Yankees cannot get a situational hit. Like, they haven't. They have not. have been completely unable to get a hit when it matters. Seventh inning, you still have uh, <clears throat> Jake Cousins pitching. Shohei Otani fouls out to third. And then, of course, he walks Mookie Betts. Freeman grounds into a fielder's choice, but Betts out at second. And they pull, I'm sorry, I apologize. Cousins was, Cousins was out. Cousins was pulled. And Tim Hill opens the inning. He gets Otani. Again, Otani did not look comfortable. Walks Betts. Gets Freeman. And they pull Tim Hill. And, and boom, brings in Clay Holmes. And the first hitter comes up, and Teoscar Hernandez hits a single, and Freeman goes to third. Thankfully, Max Muncy struck out, and the inning was over, and the Yankees didn't pay for this decision. But again, you know who should have still been pitching? Nestor Cortez. There was no need to use all these relievers. None. They got to pitch tonight. They're going to have to pitch tonight. Why did you use them last night? You had no need to use them as long as Nestor Cortez was pitching well. You never found out. Bottom seven, <clears throat> you got a new pitcher for the Dodgers, Hudson. Volpe strikes out, Rizzo singles. And this is where it gets, this is where it just becomes comedy. You started Trevino for Wells. All right, All right. You started Trevino for Wells. And what do you do? You pinch hit Wells for Trevino. I don't. I'll never. Are you really gonna? Go, are you really going lefty righty with Wells and Trevino? <clears throat> with all respect. What did Austin Wells do? He catches two balls to lead off, and he fouls one off. Then he gets another strike. Look, one of the one of the many right down the middle strikes that we didn't swing at. Strike looking, ball four, strikes out on a pitch that was perfect, right down the middle, didn't swing. Bat held on his shoulder. So you pinch hit Trevin Wells, who ha who was sitting because he can't hit, and you put in Trevino, who then didn't hit, and then you pinch hit Wells for his replacement. And he doesn't hit. And you're surprised? And then here, Verdugo walks. Rizzo first. Again, this is the third inning with men on in a row. <clears throat> or I'm sorry, third inning and four, third and fourth, four innings that we've got. Yankees had two on with two out. 
second 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 time in four innings they've had two on and two out, and third inning where they had someone at second base and could not score. And so Labor Torres strikes out. Looking, this was the this was um this was the big one. This was the seventh. This was the pitch that was about six inches high that got called a strike on Gleyber Torres that struck him out. He didn't swing. It was a horrible missed call by the by the umpire. It, I mean, if he gets on and the bases are loaded with Juan Soto coming up, coming up, you have no idea what could possibly happen. But I'm not going to sit here and blame that strike for why the Yankees lost. It would be an easy cop out. Did it hurt? Sure. Would I love to have seen Soto come up with the bases loaded? Absolutely. Hell, they may have walked him on purpose and given the Yankees a run and said, Judge, do something. I don't know. They might have. I might have done that. Because I don't think Judge could hit a beach ball right now. I would chance it, possibly. But you have to be on. But when you're playing so poorly and scuffling so bad, Everything's magnified. So that call is a killer for the Yankees. Clay Holmes is back. So, uh, Wade Smith lines out the second, and then he pulls out Clay Holmes. This, this, this shit where you're flip-flopping pitchers in the middle of an inning after an out, it's crazy. He brings in Tommy Canely. He gets Gavin Lux on a strikeout and gets Kike Hernandez to pop out. Inning is over. Again, you're using all these pitchers for what? Next inning starts, eighth inning. Soto lines out to right. Judge walks. Oh, my God. Judge gets on base. He does not swing a ball. Full. I mean, he does, not, he does not swing at a pitch off the plate and work the count from one and two and gets three straight balls and walks. He stayed off three bad sliders, and he stayed. He, he, he got on. And then, unfortunately, John Carlos Stanton and Jazz Chisholm both struck out. So when Judge finally gets on, everyone else doesn't. Ninth inning comes along, Tommy Canely pitching for uh, the Yankees still. He gets a grounder. And then they take out Canely and bring in Luke Weaver. Why not just have Luke Weaver come in? Again, like it's like you're just using guys now at this point. I, I don't know why. And Luke Weaver hits Otani in the foot, <laughs> but gets Mookie Betts into a double play and the inning's over. Yankees come up in the ninth. Volpe strikes out again. Rizzo walks. Austin Wells fouls out to first. Big shock. Ver Alex Verdugo hits a homer to right. It's 4-2. We're not going to get shut out. But Gleyber Torres grounds out to shortstop, and the game is over. Yankees lose 4-2. I have had it with Aaron Boone decisions. The Yankees only scored two runs. That third run... I mean, that fourth run that they that the Dodgers scored was a killer because it just made it, it made the journey back so much more difficult. And obviously, the Yankees, the Yankees didn't even score three runs. But then we can go back and look at the fact that they didn't. I mean, did they not tell Clark Schmidt attack Shohei Otani? I, I just have to wonder. Did you not tell this man to attack him? Go throw the ball right down the fucking middle. Throw it down the middle. Let's see if he can swing. Like, we have no knowledge if this man can actually hit the ball right now because he got on with a walk and he got on getting hit by a pitch. We don't know if he can hit. We don't know if he can hit. We have no idea. I saw his swings. They weren't Shohei Otani swings. I don't care what Dave Roberts says. They weren't. Or what you saw in batting practice on, on BP. Hit, hit the ball at 98. 96. So let's let's see. Let, let's see. And the Freddie Freeman deal, one two. Like, who's calling the pitches? The ball needs to be thrown on the outside, low and away, to Freddie Freeman. It's crazy frustrating. This this team is down to its last lifeline. There's only one team in history that's come back from 3-0. And the Red Sox looked dead in the water in 2004 against the Yankees. They were dead in the water. Heck, they overcame Mariano Rivera 
in game four and game five. But there's a huge difference between these two teams. The huge difference. The difference is, in that series, the Red Sox scored runs. It wasn't like the Red Sox couldn't score a run. Yankees won game one 10-7. The second game was a low-scoring 3-1 game. Game three, it was 19-8. It wasn't like the Red Sox couldn't hit the ball. That's the issue. The Red Sox were hitting the ball. The Yankees just hit the ball more. The Yankees, the Yankees aren't hitting. So I want to believe because I'm a Yankees fan, but <clears throat> I'd just be happy to not be swept. Although, what does that do? Extend my agony? Extend watching Aaron, Ju- Aaron Boone manage games? Extend watching Aaron Judge become ar- arguably the biggest choke artist? In the history of the Yankees playoff baseball, I love Aaron Judge, and it pains me. I defend Aaron Judge like crazy. But he's what we're watching is indefensible. I said he'd win World Series MVP. I really thought this man would wake up. I really thought he'd come out of it. With that week-long break, a chance to regain himself, breathe in, breathe out. It's been the exact it's been the exact opposite. In fact, in fact, he's been worse in this series than he was against the Guardians and than he was against the Royals. He's been worse. And I didn't think it was possible for him to be worse. He's been worse. His slugging is lower than his his slugging is lower. Is this the playoffs or is this just this series? His slugging is worse. <clears throat> yeah, it's the this is the playoffs. So his his slugging in the playoffs is worse than his batting average in the regular season. Right now. Can't hit. He cannot hit. And so what do we do? Tonight the Yankees play game four. What would you think would be the most logical thing to do? You got to run out Garrett Cole. You got to put Garrett Cole out there on three days notice. Your season's on the line. Your season is on the line. You're going to go put your $36 million pitcher out there. Why? Because if he pitches tomorrow, today, which is today is Tuesday, game seven, God, imagine if there was actually a game seven. If there was, if there was, game five is Wednesday, off day Thursday, game six is Friday. Game seven is Saturday. What does that mean? That means that that man is pitching game seven on three days again. Are you going to run on a bullpen game? Are you really going to hand the ball to Clark Schmidt for a game seven in L.A.? Again, I'm way ahead of myself, but this is the problem of how Aaron Boone manages. Derek Jeter said it very clearly after game one. I don't know why he took out Garrett Cole, who was pitching great. I don't know why he did it, right? He said that clearly on the post game. He's pitching great. Why are you pulling him? You're not only screwing up tonight and blew the game, which in in effect, I think, blew the whole series. But beyond that, you're setting up your pitching for the remainder of the series. And what have you seen? You've seen a a nonstop beeline of relievers. You haven't used your, your starting pitchers to connect the dots. You haven't used Marcus Stroman in the entirety of the playoffs, and you just use Nestor Cortez and only use him for 15 pitches. So what the fuck? So it's exactly what Jeter said has happened. Has happened. You've affected the entirety of the playoff of the series with these decisions. And so now let's not throw our best pitcher out there. Let's go to Luis Gill and pray that in a a Luis Gill versus the Dodgers bullpen that the Yankees can somehow put together enough runs and somehow hope that Luis Gill does not get bombed 
and somehow see a game five. But again, it means that in game seven, you won't have Garrett Cole. And you're not going to pitch him on two days rest or start him at least. Could he pitch? I guess he could pitch. But you're not going to start him on two days rest. It's 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 more decisions like this that continue to show me that this man is so in over his head when he manages games. This is a simple decision. You have a thirty-six million dollar ace pitcher. Use him. If you if you can't use him now, when can you use him? You want to use him in game five? If there is a game five, well, there might not be a game five, Aaron. There might not be a fucking game five. You got to get there first. I mean, maybe he ends up being right tonight. I I hope he is. I hope Luis Gill looks like the guy that pitched the first two months of the season where he was completely unhittable, not like the guy the last four months who wasn't very good. All that said, what's new? Another Aaron Boone decision that I don't agree with. I I, I will. It's like it's there's not one that I. It's very rare that I agree with anything this man does. And even when it turns out right, it still wasn't, in my opinion, the right the, the right call. Let's say the Yankees had won game one, right? Let's say they had won. Let's say Nestor Cortez got Freddie Freeman and ended the game, and the Yankees won two. The Yankees won three to two. The bullpen issue exists still. The Yankees still lost game two. The Yankees have still lost still lost game three. They're still down two to one. I don't think the, the game, the Yankees winning game one cured the Yankees' bat, the hitting problems. They've scored four runs in 18 innings. Both of them on two run, um, what was game, you know, was, no, t- last night on a two run homer in the ninth inning. The game before it was one run until the, uh, one, it was a home run and then we, we scored a run in the, in the ninth. And Volpe strikes out and Trevino flies out. I mean, they're still down two to one. Would you run out Luis Gill right now in a two to one series? I wouldn't. I'd be running out Garrett Cole. That's out of the series. It, maybe the Yankees will shock the world. It would be a great thing for me. It would allow me to put 2004 to rest. But yeah, I, I don't expect it. I'd be surprised if they won tonight. I think the series is over. I think it's over tonight. I, I, I the fight that existed against the Indians, the Guardians, the competitive at bats, it's not there. It's not there. We'll see. As you see, this is a very dejected Rudy's rant, where I talk facts over feelings. But again, Aaron Boone, Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is going to go down as the biggest choke artist in Yankees baseball playoff history. He's going to go on the biggest, the biggest fucking choke artist. Doesn't matter what you do in the regular season if you look like complete and utter ass in the playoffs every single time. He's going to win MVP. He deserves it. He earned it. But what does it matter if you can't hit a beach ball? And they were blaming last night. He got hit in game five by the Guardians. And they want to blame that on what happened with his swing. Did you watch the the play that series versus the Guardians? He had two hits in five games or three hits in five games. He was terrible. Yeah, he had a couple of homers, but he was otherwise terrible in that series. It's terrible. Couldn't hit. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Love to hear what you got to say. I'm sure there's plenty of uh, non-Yankees fans who want to clown. Go ahead, clown. It's all good. I, I can take it. I picked the Yankees in five. It's not been that. It's they're gonna get. They're getting wiped out. Here's what it is, man. That's why it's, I mean, baseball is a great sport. I love baseball, but man, it can humble you real fast. That's all I got, man. Come on now. <laughs>